Web API has been a highly requested topic here in the channel, so we've decided to create a whole series devoted to Web API, and we are going to provide instructions step-by-step -step on what you need to do to create your own Web API. Welcome back to another video. If you are new to the channel, I'm a self-taught developer, and in this channel we create videos intended to be resources for new developers. Some of the videos are technical and others are videos of me sharing insights and sharing my experiences related to challenges that you might face during your developer journey. I think following the series will be a great step-by-step -step guide to be able to create a web API. The main topic for this application or the API that we are going to be building is going to be based around cars. The API will support the functionality needed for you to be able to catalog cars based on their make and model and year. Towards the end of the series, we will also have a video or maybe multiple videos on how to create a UI that will consume this API we will be creating. I estimate that we'll be able to get everything done in seven videos, but that might be subject to change depending on the complexity of the topics that we will be covering. In video number one, or what we will be accomplishing in the video is creating a virtual desktop on your computer. So that way you can install or uninstall different software without affecting your day-to-day -day, uh, working environment. To do this, we are going to be using VirtualBox. Uh, this software is an open source software that runs on Windows and on Mac, and I believe also Linux. The reason why I'm making this video is to ensure that your work environment will not be affected by whatever functionality or software we will be installing throughout the, the life of this series. In the second video, we will be showing how to install SQL Server. As you know, for any RESTful API, there is a need to have a database to hold the data pertaining to the application. In this series, we will be using SQL Server from Microsoft. There's a free version of SQL Server, which is called SQL Server Express. It's free to download and free to use. The second part of this series will show you how to download and install this software. In the third video of the series, I will be sharing my process on how I design a database, taking in consideration all the different objects and data we will need to store to support the application. In the fourth video of the series, I will be explaining how to set up Entity Framework Core or EF Core for short in the web API we'll be creating. And that takes us to part number five or video number five of the series, which is how to implement CRUD, create, read, update, and delete functionality onto the web API. Now, this is the main reason why I decided to create this series, but I don't think it was suitable for me to bypass all the other steps and just take you directly to where you start interacting with the database if you're not familiar with how to set up a database. So that is why the previous videos one through four are essentially to support, to be able to dive deep in video number five. Part number six or video number six will be creating the UI piece for the application. This might turn out to be more than one video depending on the features we will be using or implementing um, in this phase. So there could be a potential for me to add more videos depending on the length of the videos. If I think a video is spanning for, for too long, um, I might have to split it into multiple videos. Hopefully it's not more than two. I won't necessarily know until I start recording that video. So just keep that in mind that the UI piece might be split into more than one video. And that takes us to the last piece of the series, which is authentication and authorization. Now, this is another topic that I've been getting a lot of comments and questions about. So I think that this is going to help a lot of you. It's going to answer a lot of questions regarding authorization and authentication. There is a difference. Authentication and authorization are not the same thing, although most of the time they are implementing and developed at the same time. Uh, but in the video or videos, I will go into the differences uh, between authorization and authentication. Again, this is another part of the series where I'm not sure if it will require only one video or if we will have to record more than one video to explain all the concepts efficiently. I am really looking forward to answering all those questions that I've been getting in the last couple of months. 
I think this series will answer a lot of the questions that I have received. So I'm really looking forward to start seeing your feedback. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to release this video series on IGTV. Uh, I know that in the past, most of my videos, I put them up on YouTube and then I re-edit them to put them on IGTV as well. Since I will be screen sharing on most of these videos, it is not very helpful when I have to edit the videos for them to fit in a vertical format. So if you are following us on Instagram, um, I really encourage you to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want to follow this series. Thank you guys for your time. And if you found this video helpful, please subscribe or follow us on IGTV. Thank you.